Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to this special video um, brought to you by Crashmore Kinsale Beg GA Club. Um, I suppose in these testing times with COVID-19, we're struggling with the lack of sport. Um, you know, our, our fans have nothing to, to entertain themselves and so on and so forth. So we thought we'd try and put something together and give them that spark that you get from sport. So we decided we'd look back at our most recent success, which was uh, the 2018 hurling campaign, uh, the intermediate campaign, where the club won its first ever uh, intermediate Western title and narrowly lost out in a well-contested county final. So um, we're going to look back on that tonight and we're going to, to do it with a few of, uh, familiar faces from the club. I have uh, three players that were togged on the day and uh, yeah, we're going to go through it. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce the three players. The, the first one is Jason Seward. Say hello, Jason. Hello, Jason. Hi, everyone. And the second is Brian O'Halloran. Say hello, Brian. Hello, all. And the third, and uh, not, not least, but coming last, is Ryan O'Sullivan. Say hello, Ryan. Hello, Ryan. Perfect. All right. So, like, uh, we'll get up and running, lads. Um, that's our introduction done. Um, we're going to we're going to have a build up to the Western Finals. So we start by talking about the run to it. All right. So, uh, uh, by my records, we we played Capacuin Ardmore and Bally Sagart in the group stage. Um, we played Capacuin first, winning on a scoreline of two seventeen to one thirteen. Then we we rocked on to Ardmore and won by twenty one points to seventeen before finishing up with Bally Sagart on a scoreline of two nineteen to two seventeen. Um, do you remember those games, lads? Uh, Brian, do you remember them? Uh, yeah, I remember fairly well. Um, I remember we had much preparation before the Kappa Quinn game and we didn't know kind of how it was going to go and we played very well. And then we kind of rocked into the Arbor game then, I think, which was delayed with, uh, for a week with bad weather or a night at least and it was played in terrible conditions. And then the Bally Saga game was in the middle of summer when both teams were missing their inter-county players and... I think we got a last minute goal to win the game, which, you know, it might have seemed important because we were through, but it meant that we topped the group. So in hindsight, it was a big game because it meant maybe an easier quarter final. Yeah, that's that's my own recollection on it too. Jay, do you have any memories that you uh, you want to share of those three games? Um, I just remember with the Kappa Quinn game, the first one, um, I suppose being around a good while now, um, you start getting a feel for in the dressing room beforehand what way people are thinking. And I think with Clash More, I don't know what it is about us, but when we're nervous, and like Brian mentioned there, that we hadn't a whole lot done, I could sense the nerves inside in the dressing room of people, geez, we're, we haven't a lot done here, you know. We don't want to embarrass ourselves. We're, we're under pressure here. And throughout the years, I love seeing that because... I knew exactly what we were going to get then. In that first game of Cap Quinn in particular, we just ripped into him. We get so nervous that we don't think we've enough done. And I think we just plough into him. It just suits us as a club. And I remember that being the starting point for our year in championship. And it was, it was great to get off the mark. Um, prior to that, we had some league games. Um, like Brian said, we had our inter-county lads that were away. We were often patchy with the teams that we had. But I just remember we just kept on narrowly winning games, being very competitive when we, we oughtn't have been before. Um, so that Kappa Quinn game was big for me and I think it set us in the right tone for the rest of the year. Very good. Um, Solly, remember the Paddy Sagard game in the middle of the summer? We were both missing half of our panels. Uh, I think it was the Sean Fleming game on the day, if you remember. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah, that was, that was a big one out for Bjogi. He... Um... Stood right up to the name. Uh, it was a late. Was that a late call up, Johnny? Am I right in saying? That's correct. He only went in before the game, and he spotted the keeper off his line from about fifty-five yards. I think. Yeah, it is, it's one that'll go down the history books. All right, I'm sure he's still telling people about in the pub if he meets them. And I'm sure we'll hear about it again. So after that, we moved on and we got to the quarterfinal. From winning the three games, we uh, we we got the bottom team and the other group, which was Strabley and that year and every year, to be fair. So uh, we beat them in a, a narrow scoreline of uh, 16 points to 112. Do you remember that one, lads? Uh, Brian? Uh, yeah, we were... It was after a long layoff in the summer and we were fairly stale. Um, I think we played only fair and we were kind of cruising enough, I think five or six points up with a few minutes to go. And they got maybe one, two or three at the end and... 
I remember we were kind of hanging on towards the end. It was one of our least impressive uh, performances of the year, definitely. And it was one that maybe in years gone by, we would have maybe thrown away at the end. Um, maybe it was a good sign that we showed a bit of resolve at the end when the tide was turning against us and it looked like we were panicking a bit. Um, so that was the Stradbill again. Yeah, Sully, you remember if uh, their free taker Shane O'Hearn was off colour that day, if he was on form, we'd have been uh, we'd have been in trouble. Do you remember that? Oh, it would have been a totally different game, Johnny. Um, I remember like we were in the stand and looking down at us, and you were saying to yourself, if he kind of even coming towards the end of the second half, if he got two or three more frees, it would have been a different game. He uh, really kept him in it that day. Yeah, very much so. So then we went on to the semi-final where we came up against the old enemy for the second time in the in the campaign. We'd had more again. So uh, it was um, it was this time it was a bit more comfortable for us. We won on a scoreline of 20 points to 112. Uh, do we, uh, do you have any memory of that game, Jay? What, what, what springs to mind? Yeah. Um, well, I remember like there was just when K- Kelly came in, um, the trainer this year, like, it just brought a, a whole new dimension to it. Like we took a different approach. It was nearly more relaxed, which kind of suited us. Like even certain things before starts of games, having music in the dress room and stuff like that. It was a more chilled out atmosphere. But I remember then when it comes to go time, it's like a, a flick switching and off we go. It's game ball. <laughs> it was good. It suited us. Um, so, I mean, Ardmore, as you say, next door neighbours here, always a massive game always put it up to us, have beaten us in Western finals. Um, like that, things clicked. Um, things were working. We were in the right headspace. And like Brian said beforehand with the Strabley game, yeah, we had been comfortable. And next thing it came back and Strabley ground us down a bit again and we came back. So that stood to us game on game leading on. It stood to us going to the Ardmore game. And yeah, it was great to win like in a, a big, massive confidence booster for everyone. Fantastic. So we um, we discussed the final after we've watched it, which we'll do in a minute. But before that, let's talk about the uh, the preparation for the big game itself. So we were uh, it came into we, we when we beat Ardmore, we two we we had a f- two week lead up into the final. Um, you you referenced uh, Coach Kelly there, Michael Kelleher, Jay. So uh, we we knuckled down, Brian. How do you remember much about those two weeks training and the lead up to the final? Um, yeah, I remember we, we celebrated the Armour win now. Um, it was only two weeks before the final, but it was a big game for us and a local derby. And we gave it a good Sunday and Monday, to be honest. And, uh, you know, we, we had to kind of back it up, I suppose, by, by training hard the two weeks then in the, into the Western final. Um, I think people in West Waterford had said that, you know, we were totally the underdog. We weren't great against Strabley or Armour. And maybe, you know, that took the pressure off us, I think. Ali Sagard had a very strong 15. They were meant to be going exceptionally well. Uh, and I remember thinking the pressure wasn't really on us. I mean, we were mad to win it. Um, it you know, it was a dream to, to, be, to be in the final and going to win it. But I remember there wasn't huge pressure on us. Um, Solly, you remember there was every flag in the country that was mint for Mayo ended up in Clashmore that week. Uh, the place was truly red and green, wasn't it? What is the fact, Johnny? I had, I had the parents here and they were rushing around to shops trying to find flags and bunting in the whole lot. And I'd say for a finish with nothing up. But um, the buzz around the place was something else. Like even within the, the, the team itself, going down to training and fellas bouncing around the place beforehand and whatever. It was, um, it was something else to be involved in. It's funny, Jason, isn't it? There was um, we've been involved in other Western finals, especially you and I, the older members of the club. Um, like it was a different feel running into this one. I felt there was a, there was more confidence around the place. Or even though at the bookmakers we were underdogs going into that Paddy Sager game, I think uh, I think it's fair to say we were um, we were quite confident in the camp. Or there was there was more cause for enthusiasm or something, was there? Yeah, <clears throat> again, it was a funny one. Like, you know, um, you mentioned about the flags all around the place and everything like that. So, yeah, the hype was building definitely in the parish, maybe outside the camp. But because the likes of Billy, Ed, a lot of them, a lot of us have been around for so long, we've been in these Western finals before. Now, we've a lot of young lads, new lads of the team and everything at the time. And I think the experience kind of showed because previous years when we've been in finals and stuff, I think we could have been guilty of leaving the occasion get the better of us prior to the game. And while outside everything was happening, people were talking it up, talking about the game, uh, flags everywhere. I think inside the camp, in training, 
like it was just always it's another game it's another game it's another game and we trained that way like and it wasn't there was no big right okay this is a huge game there was no talking up in every session we just trained like we always trained we trained with confidence we were zipping around the place everything was going well um <clears throat> it was just different now inside the camp obviously the bookies things like that look uh, in ga circles this, these things do get mentioned they were mentioned we loved it like we had beaten Bally Sargent already that year and um, we played him previously it's always tight um they're a lovely team to get stuck into um, and, and get and get dirty with as well at times so like a uh, defensive point of view you know you're going to you're, you're going to be listening to some stuff you're going to be giving some stuff but it's going to be hard like it's going to be fair we inside the camp definitely did not see them as being oceans ahead of us and um, so I think, yeah, we were, we were ready for that game when it came. Brilliant. So um, without further ado, we'll, uh, we'll move on and watch the highlights of that game and we'll, we'll get back and discuss it in a minute. Thanks very much, guys. This Western Intermediate Hurling Final. A great catch there by number nine, Edmund O'Hallon, driving it in towards Sam Ryan. The ball goes over the bar. A point for Cashmore, a great individual score there by Edmund O'Hallon. Knocked out there by Jack Roach. Knocked there by Jack Roach. Out there, out there, out there. The speedster here on the Valley Sire team. Can he get it up? Yes, he can. He's away. Kyle Bennett is away. Into County Minor. Kyle Bennett gets it away. Up towards Eugene O'Brien. Can Eugene get to it? He can. Take it off in there by the Cashmore man. He drives it, drives it, drives it, drives it. And over the bar for Cashmore. Michael Ryan, once again out towards the centre of the field, towards Chris O'Gorman, Chris O'Gorman plays again, can he get around the second attempt, yes, yes he can, he's there, the Clashmore man came in, Edmund O'Hallon driving that ball in, ball in, he tore the full forward man, Brian O'Hallon has it, Brian O'Hallon has it there, John, what's he going to do, he's going to take his point I think, if he can, and yes he can, great score there by the inter-county man, Number 12 here for Cashmore. That's eight three. He drives the ball down towards 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 Brian O'Hallon. Brian O'Hallon causing all kinds of trouble here. For the Valley Center. Brian O'Hallon drives the ball over the now. The ball driven back down towards that full forward line. That is very dangerous here. Oh Valley Center, but they seem to be in, in control of it. They're trying to get it out, but Brian O'Hallon has is no hiding has it. Number 14 has it. O'Leary. Yeah! And goal for Cashmore. Yeah! Paul O'Connor. Paul O'Connor getting in there. A goal for Cashmore. Cashmore lead one goal and seven points. The Valley Sarabs one goal and three. Show me the middle of the ball. But Cashmore will get it out. And clear that ball. A good clear to the field. Brian O'Hallon and Under. Can he get it out of the field? Number 10 for Cashmore. If he gets it up, there's trouble here for Valley Sarabs. If he gets it up, there's trouble for Melly Sarah. The ball is thrown out of the great save by Sam Ryan. The ball back in, number 14. And the ball goes over the bar and put it in the goal. A bit of a let off there for Valley Sarah. The ball being brought out here again towards Christy Murphy in centre field. Fritz Chris O'Gorman gets a hand to it. Number 12 for Cashmore. Number 12 for Cashmore gets it in. Towards number 8, Brian O'Hallon. Has he got a score? Yes, he has. <laughs> The ball coming out towards, there, towards Christy Murphy. Cashmore on to it again. Cashmore on to it. Edmund O'Hallon getting the ball in towards Brian O'Hallon. Brian O'Hallon after it. Brian O'Hallon gets it up. Brian O'Hallon gets it up. The danger man for Cashmore. What can he do with it? He's blocked down well there by the Valley Sire man. Cashmore get the ball back in towards Brian O'Hallon. Will he put the ball over the bar? Yes, he will. Cashmore to take this sideline cut again. Driving the ball up. A good sideline cut. Drives it up. Drives it up into that half hour then. Number 14 for Ben. There's a free man help here for Clashmore. Brian O'Hallon on his own. He drives the ball across the square. Clashmore in danger here for Clashmore. And a goal for Clashmore. Tied the Borka. A clever ball across here towards him. Towards number 14, Paul O'Connor. Paul O'Connor has a go. Has he got a score? He hasn't. The ball goes into the square. And a soft goal there. A soft goal there for Cashmore. 
Three minutes additional time, three minutes additional time here in the Western Intermediate Hurling Final. Can Belly Sackett hold out? Can they get another score? The ball, a great puck out again by Michael Ryan. Michael Ryan pucking him out all day against the wind, with the wind, it doesn't matter. He's getting great puck outs all day. Just ball coming back out with the ball. There's a spare, spare man up here again, Edmund O'Hallon. Edmund O'Hallon trying to get in. Trying to get the ball in towards Liam Fleming. Liam Fleming, the substitute came on there in the second half. He has a go. He has a go. He drives the ball. Over the ball. We're level here on the Western Intermediate Hurling Final. We're level again. The ball again poked out very quick there by Michael Ryan, but the danger man has it. The danger man is Brian O'Hallon. Kieran Fennessy doing well on, on, on Brian O'Hallon at the moment. Flashmore still trying to get it up there, trying to get it up. Billy Sire trying to get it out. James O'Leary has it, he tries to get it up. Billy Sire trying to get it out. Will there be a throw in? They won't. Brian O'Hallon tries again, gets the ball across to the danger area. Billy Sire to Billy Sire back straight to get it up. Billy Sire back straight to get it up. The ball Steve is going to go to take it. Left side strike. The ball goes low. Into the square. Flash more have it. Flash more come out with it. Flash more come out with it. Oh. Yeah. It's all over here. It's all over here at the power team. A close call here for. Flash more. They were seven points up at one stage. Valley Sagan through bravery and heart played back and went a point ahead in that second half with three minutes to go. But unfortunately, Flash more came up with the goal that won the game. And sometimes they say game goals win games, but that's the way it goes today. Hard look on Valley Sagan. They played really, really well in that second half with the win. Played really, really well. Came from a, came from a big deficit down. Played really, really well. It was unfortunate to have a man sent off, but sometimes that's the way it goes. The final score here in the Western Intermediate Hurling Final. Valley Sagar 3-15, Clash War 4-15. Well, it's hard to imagine anyone didn't enjoy that. That was that was quite a performance, wasn't it? Um, so we're going to we're going to have a quick talk about it. Um, we're sorry we didn't have the footage of the speeches after the game. So um, Brian can't remember exactly what he said. So we're go, just going to go straight down to talking about that game and thinking about it. Uh, I'll go straight to you, Ryan O'Sullivan. Uh, wow, John Pinder, hey. Uh, he's a hard man to keep down. He mightn't be the most, you know, he, he, it doesn't come naturally from, but he always pulls it off. To be fair to him. Yeah, stick two goals in a, in a Western final like that, it's something else. I, I suppose we're after giving Pinder, he's, he's mentioned, but like um, the real the real Warriors on the day, Jason, I suppose uh, the, the two O'Hallorans, I won't let him talk about his own performance, but both uh, Edmund and Brian really, really stepped it up, as they had been all year, but they were exceptionally good in that game, weren't they? Yeah, like from where we're positioned at the back there, myself and Mark McGrath, the goalie, we'd be in constant contact with each other throughout the game. Um, you're just seeing these two O'Halloran lads in white helmets buzzing around the place, ripping stuff up. Um, just the hand of God from Ed Halloran there at times and the power bursting through and then just the guile and the speed of Brian um, ripping through. It's just, geez, I tell you, from a back line, it, um, it is nice to have a forward line midfield like that where you've total trust in them and you're just trying to do your bit to keep it, keep the scores down because you know that from geez, the half back line up that there's damage to be done in every line on that pitch like it's at the, the, they were outrageous like you know that they really pulled it out of the bag for us that day and drove everyone on because the lines they're in like they're responsible for their own lines and they really lead from the front which is great and Brian I suppose it's uh it's it would be very apt to discuss the other Brian on the field uh, that day Brian Ramsey uh, a great addition to the club and uh, really came out to show show his full ability on the day yeah um as you said you know we've gotten a few players down through the years and you never know what you're going to get when uh, a new lad joins the club um and as the year went on um Brian's getting better and better and as you said not just you know a good player a great lad to have around and uh, in a Western final, and his first ever Western final for his new club, he's adopted a club to get two goals and to stick the winner. It's uh, it was rider right over stuff, and like 
he'll go into folklore forevermore around Clashmore because of it, whatever um, whatever else he does. Absolutely. Um, there was some kind of there was some un, uh, un, unusual maybe heroes inside in the middle of it too. Um, Aidan Trehy um, managed to hit balls out of his hands that he'd never managed to do before. You kind of maybe was there a feeling that our luck was in that day because of it, Jason? <laughs> well, um, I suppose um, those of you who don't know Aidan Trehy, he's known as Messi around the place um, to us inside the camp. He wears those socks up and he wears bright socks and bright shorts and everything. I think he's borrowing his, uh, his, uh, his now fiance's Tina's socks around the place, but he loves to flaunt his style. Um, oh, terribly, terribly effective guy. I mean, the miles to, the, that he clocks up in the game, the work rate he brings. But like that, when, when it three he is scoring from out in the corner there, I think he finds it easier to strike a ball with four lads around him than he does if he was left on his own. <laughs> but, um, he's a great um, man. He's, he's a great man to be in a drill and training with as well because he's like a tennis player. He wears these big shorts and he, and he puts slitters inside in the pocket of the shorts. So if a ball goes west in the middle of a drill, you don't have to go running after you. You'll see your man pick a ball out of the pocket and away you go again. Yeah, and uh, I, 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 I put a lot of that down to laziness. <laughs> And I suppose uh, we'd, uh, we'd other big performances too. Uh, Dickie Allen got his hands on some amount of ball that day. Um, and, uh, the untold work and getting back and things he did was unbelievable. Uh, was there anyone else that you think Ryan deserves a mention, uh, an honourable mention on that day? Jeez, I think Brian, Brian Lynch can't go without a mention of tonight. He went on. He, he was something else in that game. There was a couple of times he went on a saunter up the field and he might have got scores himself, but he was opening up the play the whole laying off ball. And I think for a young fella, he was something else that day. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. What about you, Jason? Anyone else you think that needs an honourable mention? Uh, it's, it was just one of those years. It's one of those teams um, where you could pick and you're now like we had a goalkeeper there doing mighty work protecting our bacon a lot of times. You have sticky corner backs, you have beautiful hurlers there in the half back line, you have lads getting stuck in, work rate, Leary's a man mountain, just you throw any type of ball on top of him, doesn't matter who's around him, he's going to stop a good hurler from playing as he does and really leads from the front. And I think in the next few years, I think, think we really see the best of him. Other than that, you have such classy forwards. I we got mentioned around. the Hallerans, uh, Ramsey inside is just, you know, he's one of these lads, he floats around, you lose him if you're marking him, you think he's out of the game. If you get that ball to that man, like, he'll do that damage. Up front, we refer to John Pender, two goals, and uh, from those clips we've seen, I think he'd be disappointed he didn't get more. But um, when I asked him before, like, in training, because, you know, he's a difficult man to mark, I'm often put on him. I said, John, you know, we, what's, the, what's the story like? What do you do? Um, you know, do you go left or right? What should I be thinking if I'm marking a man like you? And he said, uh, I can't really tell you because, to be honest, when I get the ball, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I 100% believe him when he says that. <laughs> but um, no, listen, exceptional team with, with young lads, Brian Lynch, Keane, Luke. I mean, they were buzzing over the place. It was just everything came together. You need to get lucky in a year. We got lucky with injuries. We got lucky with players. Um, it was it, it was it was just great. Um, a lot of heroes on the day. And uh, then the, the party started. Brian, uh, you were you were leading that march. Uh, how did the celebrations go for the for the hour or two you been celebrating it afterwards? Uh, yeah, they were as as good as you can imagine. Um, we went back to uh, the day show straight away and just look all your dreams rolled into one. Your your best best evening and night that you'll ever have in the village. Um, anyone you want to be there, you know, all the pubs full and meeting all the people that you want to meet, um, just dream stuff. Uh, and then you roll into the Monday, we went to you all on the Monday, and but that's more private with maybe just more players, kind of coaches and, you know, the odd few more. And you're probably able to um, relax more and take it in a bit more on the Monday. Um, and just two absolute dream days and you even nearly losing the cup on the Monday evening couldn't, couldn't dampen the party. Uh, I suppose to, to put you under pressure there for a second before we move on, 12 months previously you were playing in Crow Park and uh, scoring in an All-Ireland final. Uh, how, did, uh, how did this ex uh, compare as an experience to, uh, as regards joy levels and what you took out of it? Um, yeah, to be honest, the, look, the, the club win 
it meant more to me um, just because of who you're winning with and you know family and friends I know it's a cliche that everyone says at the club but um, when you win with your club it's it's just unbelievable um, and you'd always be more nervous playing with Clash more than water to be honest well I would be anyway um, just I suppose the fear of letting your nearest and dearest down is, is the big one water the, probably the pressure is on you just letting the team down but I don't know with Clash more times feel uh you know a lot of pressure playing and to, you know sort of the relief of winning something and um, with clash more was just unbelievable to be honest best the best day of my life was the western final day i have no point i'm saying it. it might be a small deal to some people but it was um it was a huge deal to me fantastic that's the sound, sound bite we were looking for um now we're moving on to the the big week came around we did two week turnaround to the to the county final um the preparation went well jason Preparation went well. Um, uh, Brian referred to relief there. Uh, I, I can relate to that after being in a few uh, Western finals prior to losing them. Um, it was a big sense of relief. It was a joyous occasion. We won and all that. Um, suddenly it was uncharted territory. <clears throat> uh, county final. Um, opportunity to play senior. You know, um, Cloné, knowing who we're up against, um, talking different lads who'd seen him play. Again, we just kept on going with the, the model we had done for every game. Just another game, keep doing what we're doing, get the touch in, let's work away, Western final over, forget about it, move on. Um, and we, we trained away, we worked away, we kept on going. Um, probably two weeks, you know, kind of anxious, chomping at the bit to just, right, you wanted to be there now, you want to play, waiting for it. Um, like, it's a huge occasion. I mean, you know, for a club like ourselves, we, we had made history. Um, we, their club had never won a Western Championship before. We had it done. Um, history made a lot of teams, like there was teams back along. They got us up out of junior. Um, I remember seeing junior games as a young fella going watching them. It meant so much to them celebrating. Um, suddenly the, there was that as well going forward. Like there was now the opportunity of senior hurling. Um, you have the, you know, you, you've you have exceptional players. You've Brian, you've Tyke, you've young lads with all Ireland medals. Um, Ed and Paul, there, you know, you, you want them as a club. You want the young lads that were behind the goals. Um, you know, catching sitters, shout, shouting support, getting involved. You want them to play at the highest level they can. That's senior hurling in Watford. Like I, I believe that the intermediate championship is the most competitive. Western championship, um, more so than the actual county championship. Um, but you want to get to that stage. So like we, we kept on going, we, we kept on training and it just came to, to the day itself. Like um, buzz was building, probably pressure building as well, because um, <clears throat> I think in one of the bulletins it referred to like, you know, it was, it was near record gate, gate receipts um, for that. I suppose you'd Bally Saggart. Again, you know, they were going to make history had they won the Western final. Um, everyone was there. There was people who hadn't been to hurling games before turn up and the sport was so welcomed. But suddenly I think they thought, right, you win that, you go on, you win the next game without knowing anything. So there was maybe a bit of added pressure that way. Um, but training, training kept on going. We kept on doing our bits before the game. So it just stayed. We, we kept it the same as we had done, I, I thought. Anyway, uh, we, what do you think, Brian? Yeah, I thought the same, yeah. Um, you know, big occasion. Pressure was off us in a way. It was, um, wasn't like a bonus game, but um, yeah, I know I felt it went pretty well. To me, it's a bit of a blur, to be honest. It's, I can't remember too much about it, Ryan. Do you remember anything about the, the gap in between? I suppose the standout memory to me was that Wednesday night when we met back in, I think it was Bushy Park, we trained in under lights, and uh, Kelleher just laid it out to us in the dressing room beforehand. He said, look, are we going for this? What's the story? That was grand. Fellas went out, put in a, a, a it was a fair sweat out now, fellas sweated a lot of alcohol and that went the night. But going back into the restroom and somehow realizing there was a mouse running around. <laughs> and, and for a slider to jump up at a seat like that, I don't think I saw him move as fast in the whole year. But uh, probably a stand off memory, whether it relates to hurling or not, it's something else. But, uh, uh, very that. good note to finish that right. Um, right, so for, uh, let's have a look at that county final and uh, we'll, we'll reconvene afterwards to have a chat and, uh, and shoot the breeze about that. So thanks very much. Down on top of Declan Allen and James O'Leary. It's a big cup, but it's going to go on Redmond Halloran again. Redmond, oh, what a catch by the right man. The right man is going forward. He strikes it into his cousin Brian. Ramsey gets a touch. There's an opening. There's an opening for the Ramsey. He 
He's been sold! The Brownsman has got it! And Cashmore have opened up a three-point lead! Brilliant stuff by the Brownsman! Into his colleague below on WIT! Ramsey, what a fucking goal! Brilliant by Cashmore! One three to three and that opens up things here on far field! Time things got going! Down on top of Brian Lynch! Brian Lynch gets the break to it! Edmund is coming again! Edmund! Brian Lynch is going forward! Brian Lynch is going! He's gone! He's thinking he's going left, he's going right, he puts it out to Ramsey! The Bellsman has it! It's unbelievable! One one in a minute, the Bellsman has done it again! Twenty minutes gone and Casper have opened up a four point lead! One four to three points and things were alive all of a sudden here on the front feet! We started off with the first door, 28 minutes, but things have opened up. Even the power, the plumber is going to take the puck out. He's hitting it down to the far side and puck out it. Uh, one of the but it, it's going to be caught by Declan Allen. Declan Allen gives it to uh, Edmund. Edmund is putting in a performance like another match in the last day. Out here, Sean Fleming is coming with the cornerback. The cornerback draw and draw and draw and draw and Oh, he gives it away! Paul O'Connor's in and it's gone over the black spot! The UCC student the last year puts it over. It's been a good summer in America. But he's back and he's looking fitter today. A great score there by Paul O'Connor. Intercepted a stop well. Uh, Billy Power bends lift the strikes. This is going a long, long ways. It's going to drop in around the house. How the buck goes. Oh, he breaks dangerously. He breaks dangerously. He's just hanging around. He breaks his attention to the goal. Oh, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant save by the finance manager. It's got over the bear and Clay get a point. And we're down to a three point game. But what a save by Matt McGrath. Point blank range. He pulls off one of the top quality ones. Paul the buck is okay. Back on the field. The helmet on. Ready to take the free. And Clash more than a little before half time. I think they maybe said a minute, maybe it's a two, I'm not too sure. It's a shot into the 21 by Tiger Buffet. Into the 21, Edmund is going over. Paul O'Connor decides to take it. He's well blocked down, brilliantly knocked down by Robert O'Flynn. It breaks back, it breaks back to Ryan O'Halloran. Ryan O'Halloran is going for the lever hour, it's going over the black spot, the inter county man. The chin up man has levelled it up. The white flag is up and it's all proceedings level here. Matt Murray, who's going down the far side this time. Yes, still, every puck out seems to be going down the top of Edmund. He's got it again! The Rayman has got it! What a catch! Oh, fuck it, a bad pass! He's won the free! The farmer, the dry stock farmer, that student has won the free, a brilliant free, I'm sure he'll take it himself. Pucking it down on top of here. Down the top of It's breaking the Cahill. Cahill gives it inside, there's little gaps appearing in the Clash More defence. Billy Power has it again. Bottled up by Tiger Burka. Out comes Ronan Fitzgerald. No, sorry, Brian Lynch. Gives it back to Tiger Burka. Oh, it's there, it's there for. Giron Burke mops it up. No, sorry, Jason Seaward, the Garda, drives it down to the army man. Fleming thinks he strikes it. Dangerously in top of Ramsey. Ramsey has it. Ramsey, Ramsey, has he got a brilliant? Oh, the Bellsman has got a brilliant one to put Chessboard in front of the 30 third minute. He plucked it out of the sky. What a score by the Bears, man. Cooking hands, he knows not. Mount Power drives it down the field. The pass well won by. Oh my God, well won by Seward. But did he give it away? Did he give it away in danger? Can he bottle him up? Oh my God, there's danger coming. Brilliantly saved by Mark McGrath. Oh my God, Almighty, it looked curtains there for Cashmore. But the goalie got down. Brilliantly, the finance manager in Cock got down brilliantly and flicks it out for a 6 5 It looked good. a piece. Matt McGrath takes the puck out. He's coming down here on top of Leary. Can Leary catch this one? Take Yellen and Leary both going for it. It breaks, it breaks Edmund Halloran. It breaks, it comes to Aiden Trihy. Aiden Trihy going for a big one. Oh, Aiden Trihy has put it over the black spot. Farmer, desk farm manager, farm, desk farm accountant has opened his account today and we want more of that. Stephen Power has gone for the big one. He's gone down the far side. He's gone down the top of Brian Lynch and the half forward. Keon Power, but it's gone back. It's gone back in. It's a huge one. It's a huge, 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 huge one. Was that Edmund Halloran? I kind of quite missed that man of the match last day, Edmund Halloran. He's putting in another performance to take that title again today. Not given. Comes back to the All Star. The All Star under the stand. Puts all he has into it. Down and tops the Keith. Keith with one ankle. Rises, doesn't get it. Breaks behind him. Nugent for Clane drives it out. It breaks the name. The county man, Brian O'Halloran, he's going for a big, 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 A huge one! The Inter county man has got us! He's put a two-point gap in us! We have about two minutes left. Can we be back here next Sunday? 
can we find a goal and win it? I will uh, go back playing senior hurling for the first time since 2007, which is looking possible at the moment. It's down the field, it's coming to Sullivan. Sullivan has it. Sullivan is brilliant in the second half. He's got a flick out. It's come to Edmund. Edmund has it. It's brilliant. Not in a match today! What a fucking score! We'll take that all day long! We'll come back next Sunday and we'll play this again! Or will we find a winner? Will it be going east? Will it be going west for the JJ Cabinet Sponsored Trophy? It's all to play for! I can't sit in my seat here! It's 112 apiece! 60 minutes, 38 seconds! It's out in the middle! Connie are going forward! Don't hit that end! The all stars coming! He's, he's going badly for the ball! Oh Jesus! Oh my God! Can he have a pen tree there? It was going to go It looks like it's going east. Unfortunately, this one looks like they're slipping. I think this could be red. I think he's on the yellow. No, wrong man. This one is Ramsey. Oh my God! Billy Power has a chance to put the Eastern champions in front. In fact, we only get one chance to level us. Pressure is unbelievable. And here, if it's the front, top the second left, and it looks, this looks like to get the second to press more. They've got one chance to level us. Matt McGrath is all he had behind us. Can he play a stop again? A brilliant block by Fitz. Fitz has blocked it. It's clapping. Sullivan has it again. Caddy got through. It looks like it's going down his way. Curry's got through. It looks all over. It could be now. All over for the Earl of Champions. 2018. They got the goal. They won the game. They're back playing senior hurling next year. And congratulations, man. Yeah, that was a bit disappointing, wasn't it? Um, I suppose I better caveat this before we start discussing it by saying that uh, I actually wasn't at the game myself. I had my, my belly to the sun down in the Caribbean. But uh, yeah, um, I, I presume that would have come back to haunt me if I didn't put that disclaimer in here. But but with that said, anyway, let's have a quick word with the lads and uh, kind of maybe just get a quick flavour of the, the disappointment or what they felt afterwards. So I'll go straight to you, Briner. Yeah, sure, I suppose the crushing blow of you not being there hearing that during the week it was a, a tough one to say. Um but yeah, no, on a serious note it was um it was an awful uh, feeling afterwards, yeah. Um like it was it was it was a it was an ebb and flow kind of game. We were playing a very good team, they were maybe marginally better, but Evan leveled with a with a monster score in in um, with about two minutes to go and then you're depending on, you know, the look of uh, the look of a break. And it didn't go our way. And look, county finals come around very, very rarely. And uh, yeah, it was sickening to lose. Um, um, after a glorious day two weeks beforehand, it was it was a tough one to take. Um, yeah. Um, like you look at them now on paper and I suppose with the benefit of hindsight uh, an unbelievable team to be fair to them um, you know I suppose some of them I only got to know personally afterwards but you take the likes of Robbie Flynn Jason Gleeson all these players the Powers Billy and, and um, you, you have your Michael Curry's and uh, Willie Hassey was brilliant on the day Brian he gave you an awful doing but like there was um, they had they had good hurlers everywhere in fairness when, when it really looks down I think they were let's be fair they missed threes they were probably worthy winners on the day Brian the rain, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, I think they were, yeah. Yeah, and we go to Sully for a bit on that. Yeah, no, just looking back on it, Johnny, you would have to say, like, in hindsight, they were probably the better team. Um, I think we did well to stay with them for a lot of the game. To be fair to Mark McGrath, he pulled off two great saves that kept us in it. And, um, yeah, like, again, as you said, like, they missed a few frees and that, but you can't take it away from them. They were probably the better team overall. Uh, where did the, the freeze go, right? Oh, Johnny, look, I, 
I don't often say it, but uh, I thought they went up into the air and wide as a gate. It just wasn't, wasn't great now. I was reading my history during the week, and I, I can't remember now exactly, but there were numerous times in that game we were living with them. If they had those threes, it would have been a different game. Very good. Um, yeah, I, I captured the atmosphere live on the community radio, y'all, on the internet. That's uh, that was my own view of the game. But uh, I suppose Jay, it was it was a great occasion to be part of a, an intermediate county final, and uh, you know we got to contest it. We didn't get blown out the gap by any means. Met a very strong side. Um, Will you look back positively on the year as a whole? Will you, will you look back at 2018 as a fond one? I know at a personal level, you your your little baby son there too, which is which is lovely. But like overall, um, a positive year, I think. I, we 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 still live with a smile on our face, don't we, from the thoughts of 2018? Yeah, um, definitely. Look, um, I'm probably at it 18 years now, trying to chase chase that Western title. You know, like I, I never actually. Thinking about it prior to it, um, it was always a Western final for me. I never actually, maybe that was something that I'll change now, but I never looked to the county final. Always it was the Western final because that was our fourth time uh, of looking. Um, I think the county final was uncharted territory for us. Um, they say you need to lose one to win one. Uh, I think that was the case with Clonet actually. Um, and y- you gain a lot. <clears throat> of course, the following year didn't go according to plan, but as I mentioned pr- previously, you need to get lucky. Um, we got lucky with injuries up until that point. Um, I think they really kind of shook us, I think, um, random relaxed beforehand in the game, out in the warm-up, to lose John Pender. Um, you know, I think any time you lose someone that has scored two goals in a, in, a, in a main final, in the Western final, it's a big loss. He's a, he's a hard man. He, he's a hard man to lose in the day. And I think it, it threw people a bit, you know, because... Um, when you're in doubt, you feel you can always throw it up, and no matter who maybe he's up against, um, he maybe draws a man mark or frees up someone else. Um, it, it was it was difficult going into it. Um, I'd agree with everything the lad said. Um, they were the better team. Um, they missed a lot of frees that um, they they wouldn't miss other days. Um, they had plenty of chances. Mark McGrath made two outrageous saves um, for a fellow who has trouble with his back and. Is 35, 36 years of age. Um, geez, he, he sprung out there at times and got the hurly to things. Um, it's, it's been great to have him behind you always to kind of clear up. Um, but look, an amazing year. Um, one of the best years of my life, as you, you mentioned, um, the small fellow being born. He was actually at the Western final three days later. Um, so yeah, look, I, I, I look back at it. Um, I mean, uh, moved into new house soon and that picture of that team western final that will be the first team to go up in that wall you know it meant an awful lot to me to be brought, involved with all those players there's a few of us went to the village um, there's this thing called a thursday club in the village in salmons um now uh, poor mike lumbert um you know um he passed away there uh, very recently um in the middle of all this covid thing he had a small funeral for a man who was so popular um i remember going down to the to the pub with that Western Cup with, with Brian and a few others and it really meant the world to them you know they go and they talk about um, bygone years and did the game, times they were playing and everything and just to see what it meant to them and how we as a team you know we, we, we brightened up days for them um, gave them something to talk about and I, I think there's so many moments from that year um, so yeah look we will live with me forever you know really proud to be a part of it I remember um uh, long before, sometime early 2018, I'd say it was, I was in one of the pubs in the village uh, lamenting or reminiscing on the 2000 victory in the junior when we finally got our, ourselves up intermediate there at that stage with, uh, with Seamus O'Rourke, the hero of that team. And he was going through who who were the heroes of that that team, which I remember well myself, but uh, and how great they were and how they fell apart. And I said, uh, do you know what, Seamus, it was amazing, it was 10, 12 or whatever of that team disappeared the following year and um, the, I think the real heroes were lads that came in afterwards managed to keep us up intermediate um, sustain us as intermediate let us build into this team that were good enough to be competitive and eventually win the, the Western Championship um, there's been a huge number of people contributed over the years you know there's there's so many I won't even take a, a, a stab at naming there's probably been hundreds played there's been 20 or 30 or 40 or even 50 um, mentors involved and all the rest of it. but I think in this one um, it's, it's important to, to mention um, 
Billy O'Halloran, he reminded us the, the night of the Western final, Brian, we were having the dinner that um, he was uh, that he was a selector in 2000 when we won the junior hurling 20 years later and nearly when we were uh, when we were getting our noses over the line in the intermediate West. Uh, he's still involved. Uh, it's, it's a huge, a huge commitment to be stuck in it for that long, like, uh, isn't it? Yeah, it's huge. And like, you know, he, he try and play it down and, and say it's not that important, but you know the days and the hours coming up to a game when he starts pacing the hall and the phone starts ringing uh he's under pressure and like he'd be trying to shield it from you maybe a bit but um no i think he you know it matters to him as much as anyone um yeah and he was there in 2000 as a selector and he's still there in 2018 is 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 fair going and he's he's threatening that he's 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 enough with every year and that he leave it to, to younger and better and more handsome men but he uh but no he's still there anyway and it's a long, long may continue in fairness now that he's after getting rid of the day job, he's more time to concentrate on it anyway. Um, yeah, we're going to uh, we're going to wrap it up there. Um, I'd just like to, to thank the three lads for their for their contribution. Um, it was much appreciated. Um, I hope everyone sincerely enjoys this at home. Um, it's only a bit, a bit of fun. Uh, it's looking back at a great time for anyone that, that wears the red and green with pride. Um, yeah, and we hope you, you all survive and stay well in the next coming weeks and months and we'll all see you inside in Farfield for more great days and uh, hopefully in a couple of years time we'll be making another video like this um, in other thank yous I suppose we'd, um, behind the scenes we'd like to thank Fint Bernard for Fintan Welsh sorry he, uh, he doesn't like going by his brother's uh, surname um, for, for all of his effort in putting this together and uh, our researcher Declan Hickey the chairman every single um, nugget of stats he sent me today was wrong but your look it was a it was a starting point um, sincerely though um look after yourselves stay well hope you enjoy it and we'll see you all soon so uh, take care